Okay, I hope recitation went well yesterday. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the first, first real lecture of 106. I wanted to just start off by talking a little bit about the homework. Some questions came up regarding how the system works. So uh, the text there is the same thing that was on the handout that um, we gave out on Monday. And there was some questions on this part of it that says you have three chances to solve the third part, one chance to solve the first part. Uh, what we really meant by that is you have one chance to solve the first problem before you have to reload the page and get a new parameter. So what you should do is type in your name here. So like David Yaren, your university ID, meaning your Andrew ID, for me is Yaren. Click on part one. What this problem says is to do a dilution. To, uh, you're starting with concentrated ammonia, 14.8 molar ammonia. You have to make 250 milliliters of one molar ammonia. If I hit reload on this page, oops, I get a different problem. So I get, this time it's 2.5 molar ammonia. So if you get the answer incorrect, you don't get another shot at exactly the same problem. You get another shot at a different problem. In the third one, you actually get three attempts to try and solve the problem before you have to reload the page and get a new one. So you can make two mistakes and not have the problem change on you. Does that make sense? And then what we'd like you to do is, is do a calculation. So you would say, I plan on mixing uh, this amount with that amount. So give us a little detail on what you plan on doing, because we want you to get in the habit of thinking about how you're going to go about doing something. And I won't actually do that now. Hit this checkbox. What you typed in now becomes part of the page and the virtual lab loads. Takes a little while. So you can go through here. There's a movie linked on the previous page about how we use the virtual lab. So you can create the solution, see if what you did actually led to the correct solution you were after. Type down here any changes you would make. And you can say, I did OK. You know, my original procedure was correct. Or if it wasn't correct, you would type in what you think you had to change about what you initially said. And then you can put in what you, uh, in this case, it's asking how many milliliters of ammonia did you use to make this solution, so I'll put in the wrong answer, 34 milliliters. It tells me that I should have used 169 milliliters, and now I have to go back and reload the page. And now I have a different thing entirely. I have to make three molar nitric acid from concentrated nitric acid. Does that make sense? On the third one, if you get it wrong, you get two more shots before you have to reload the page. What do you mean by stock solution? Stock solution refers to a word uh, we use for how you buy it from the chemical supplier. So when you buy nitric acid or ammonia, it comes in one of these, one of those huge bottles you saw, and it has a standard concentration. For nitric acid, it's 15.4 molar. Look good. So I have to change. Yep. <laughs> How's that? OK. So the way lectures are going to work is you'll get a handout of the type you picked up on the way in, I hope. and. Some of the stuff that, you know, this, I think one, you have to be writing down a lot of stuff in lecture that is just copying problems down and, and that type. So that's all on the handout. And then the stuff that we're going to do in lecture together, I'll write on the screen. And yeah. This. How's that? That's as large as it will go. You might want to sit a little closer. Um, 
at the end of lecture, I'll print it. And so on the Blackboard site, when we finally get one, there's a backlog of requests for Blackboard sites, I guess, because we still don't have ours created. Uh, the filled in notes will also be on the web. So you don't have to frantically copy down what I'm writing if you don't want to, because it will be posted on the web. Look good. So we, we always start the course with the review of things you're supposed to know from 105 and the stoichiometry assessment procedure they use in 105. Uh, the stuff we'll be doing in this class, you really have to be familiar with that kind of uh, manipulation. So we want to give you practice with that in the first week. So the homework problems are all stoichiometry and limiting reagent problems. And the first half of this lecture will be a review of that. Plus all the recitation activities this week are of this type. So just to start, say that um, you're someone who's putting together tool sets, tool sets for Sears. Each tool set is supposed to have five wrenches, four screwdrivers, and two pliers. You have 18 wrenches, 12 screwdrivers, and eight pliers. How many can you make? Three. Yeah, so this, uh, in order to keep everyone awake, I think people fall asleep if you don't do something every 15 minutes in a lecture, at least 10 minutes. At the temperature of this room, maybe five minutes. Uh, so what we'd like you to do is think about these problems, solve it. You're, you're welcome to talk to your neighbor about it. If you already know the solution, you can talk to your neighbor about anything you feel like it. It's sort of a time to, to discuss things with the people next to you, uh, see if you both got the same answer. It's really good if the person next to you doesn't agree with you, because then you can sort of work it out together. OK, how many people think it's A? How many people think it's B? Ah, very glad. Someone pointed out that A is a curve. Well, let me do How many people think C? How many people think D? OK, so most people got it. And one person got it even better than other people because she's pointing out that if you can make three, you can also make two. So A and B are both correct answers. So <coughs> problems like this, there's, this is very similar to the limiting reagent problem in chemistry. The reaction here would be five wrenches plus four screwdrivers plus two pliers goes to one tool set. That makes sense? And then the process of solving how many tool sets can we make is to say, I have 18 wrenches and I can make one tool set for every five wrenches. So that's a, a ratio of stoichiometric coefficients. You get one tool set for every five wrenches. If you do the multiplication, you get three plus leftover. Plus leftover wrenches. Does that make sense? And if you take the four screwdrivers, I mean the 12 screwdrivers, and say that you get one tool set for every four screwdrivers. You also get three tool sets. And if you take the eight pliers, one tool set for every uh, two pliers, you get four tool sets. Oops. Plus some leftover pliers. Does that look good? No oh, thank you. No leftover pliers. <laughs> oh. And so the limiting reagents are the wrenches and the screwdrivers. These things limit the number of tool sets. So I can make three tool sets plus leftover 
wrenches and pliers. Does that make sense? So 